Do you think my wife will notice if I put more holes in our patio? Well, I'm super determined to find out if we can get a bolting pattern that makes four point sliding X's automatically equalize at all four points. Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jingson. Welcome to my backyard, where about almost a year ago, Andy Lewis and I used his four dynamometers and my one dynamometer to find out if the four bolts were sharing the load when we did a sliding X, which in theory automatically equalizes between all four points. We found out that that is completely not true, but we have some ideas today on how a bolt pattern might change whether or not that is true. Now the original bolt pattern that we had are just four bolts in line like we have here. And I've got 3.6 kilonewtons of force on there right now with just my given ratchet on the tree. And it's a sliding X. Um, there's a lot of ways to do this. I just use a figure eight here as a, an example that everyone can follow. Since if you can tie into a high line, you can tie a figure eight. Anyways, a sliding X in theory all shares the load evenly between all the bolts. But as you can see here, which is consistent with our results from last time, that this is really only sharing 25% of what this is sharing in the middle. What we found is the ones that are most directly in line see the most force. Or we saw the ones that are closest see the most force. And since these are all the same distance, the ones in the middle are seeing 75% more than the ones here. Okay, so I moved the removable bolts to the new holes that I drilled during the intro. And it's very, very interesting actually. So on our master point right now, we currently have 4.2 kilonewtons, which is almost a thousand pounds. And here we have 0.87 and 0.94. So those are roughly the same. And here we have 1.0 and 1.2 the middle is still seeing more force than the sides, but it's significantly more even than it was on the flat, straight bolt pattern. You can see here that the one that's holding the most force right here is more or less directly in line with the tree. Please ignore this. It's very hard to remove these removables. The less deep they go, the easier it is to remove. Now I'm curious if I put these bolts maybe back here, whether or not I can get this to perfectly equalize with a sliding X. Before I take this apart, I cranked it down one more time. We're at 4.8, and here we are at uh, almost 1, 1.2, 1.4, and uh, 1 as well. So the sides are even. This one's holding just a little bit more, but they're significantly closer than they were when they were straight. Okay, so I put bolts even further back, and now we have... 4.56 kilonewtons, uh, just in case you're curious, 4.4 kilonewtons is a thousand pounds of force. What do we have over here? Oh my God, those are even at 1.1-ish. And back here, this one's still seeing the most force, but this one's less than 1.1, just only by a little bit. We actually may have found a bolt pattern that will equalize when you do a sliding X. So let's show distance between our bolts right now, even though the setup is not perfect. Uh, our outside bolts are two feet, as you can see right there. But you can see here that uh, this bolt and this bolt are not equal distances uh, from the outside ones. So you can see here, this is 11 inches away from this bolt. And this one's only seven inches away from that bolt. And I think that really reflects why this dynamometer was seeing more force than this one. And you can see here that the bolts back here are about um, 17 or 18 inches directly behind these bolts. And they are about the same distance away uh, from those bolts. However, these are not perfectly centered. And if this was more like right there instead of right there, I think these would actually be more equalized. And I don't know what the math would be in order to make this perfect. Maybe instead of 75% behind, maybe um, 70 or 60% behind. So if the bolt hole was right here instead, 
but uh, you could play with this all day long and you probably could get it perfect. This is equalized enough to make any sliding X equally hold the force. Now you can't always control the bolt pattern that you're rigging your high line off of because most of the time the bolts are already there. But if you're rigging in softer rock, this could be a great bolt pattern to evenly distribute the pressure. I have learned that I like BFKs because I can generally get them to equalize. And it's a little bit more redundant. In this scenario, you would still have to use whoopee slings and it becomes quite a cluster here at the master point. I have really, really learned to love BFKs after the equalization is a myth video number one that we did. However, we just rigged the space net at GGBY and some of the anchors were equalized with BFKs. However, others were not. And I had this beautiful 4X redundancy and 10 to one safety ratio. However, only one bolt and one leg of my BFK was holding all the force on one of my anchors. So BFKs are not perfect, especially when you're dealing with something with like a space net where you really don't know where your anchor is gonna be. It is a little bit easier when you're doing a high line and you can see the direction the line will be going. Another important thing this is for is if you're rigging off of cams. Now I never recommend doing a sliding X or even a BFK when you're rigging off of cams. However, you should do a cascading anchor, which is where you have a V off of two points and a V and take those and create a V. So V to V to V helps distribute the load more evenly. You don't want one cam holding all the force for your high line. But it is important to know when you are rigging anchors that the most direct in line is gonna see the most force and the closest piece is gonna see the most force. And if you can move and mitigate that by having them cancel each other out like they do here, then you can build a better, stronger, safer anchor. So here's one more bolt pattern I thought would be interesting before we go. Here we have 4.6 kilonewtons, 4.7, and I made a three point sliding X. And by doing that, I just used a climbing sling right here, which is safe enough when you're only putting, uh, well in this case, 1.5 kilonewtons. Uh, you would never put more than four kilonewtons on here. They're rated for 24 kilonewtons. You technically have a safety ratio. I always, if I'm doing this, like to use two of these as a redundant method rather than folding this in half. Now, of course, you can see here, this is one thing folded in half because I didn't want it sticking out too far. Now, this three-point sliding X is technically really equalized. It's 1.5, 1.5, and 1.6 kilonewtons. Now, that doesn't mean all of the bolts are sharing the load. You can see back here that it takes two to share that load. And I assume that's holding about 50 to 60% each on those bolts back here. Now, if you were to rig this with cams, what I would do is I would rig two cams here, two cams here, and then two cams further back. And you can see the pattern you would want when you extend things out. And I would create a V, a V, and a V. And then I would do a sliding X with whoopies. And by doing that, they would share one third of the load on each pair of cams. And that is how you can rig safely on something that's more delicate than these strong bolts. Okay, one more experiment we have here. We did a sliding X between the two here and then took the two there and equalized it again to there. However, these are so far back and they're no longer directly in line because the Vs isolate them. Let's see what happens. We have basically four kilonewtons. It is settling. And we have an even number on both of these, 1.2, 1.9. And then back here, we only have 0.5 and 0.8. So that is less than half the force on the outside ones. And it's just really good to know how these get manipulated when you're building your anchor. So here is another configuration we can do. We put a sliding X between those two and a sliding X between these two. And we took those points and we made a sliding X. Now this leg is longer than this one. 
So this is seeing more force than this. So let's find out where we're at. 4.76 kilonewtons. And these are 1.2 and 1.6. That's interesting. And this is 0.8 and 1.9. So these are seeing less force because of the issue we just talked about of this leg being longer. And these are not holding an even amount because I think this one is more in line. I even tried kicking it and I cannot get it to move because this equalizes so well. What I mean by that is I can't manipulate where the sliding X is. Because if you have a span set or a thick rope, it can get all jammed up in here and you can actually kick it into submission uh, to a point. So automatic equalization with a sliding X is not a myth. However, it takes a very intentional effort in order to achieve equalization. So all of your bolts or cams or wraps that you do around a boulder are holding tension evenly. Now, if you really grasp and get good at equalizing your anchors well, you might be tempted to do sketchy highlines. Therefore, you shouldn't highline.